So the idea is, if you tell me the volume that you want this prism to have, then I can take your surface area and I can minimize it like this. So let's begin with the idea of the area of a regular hexagon. Let's pretend this is a regular hexagon. And by regular, we mean that all the edges are of the same length, okay? So let's draw this hexagon really big. I want us to find the area of this hexagon. I could just tell you what the formula is, but let's discover it together. Notice that if this hexagon is regular, then it contains six equilateral triangles because this is 60, because all these would have to be 60s, because 60 times six is 360 degrees, which is this circle. And because this and this are the same, this is an isosceles triangle. Specifically, it's an equilateral triangle. Let's focus on this equilateral triangle. Let's suppose that this is S. So let me bisect it, 90 degrees. This is still 60. This is 30. And this would be half of S. Let me draw my S's like this. Now, recall properties from geometry. A 30, 60, 90. In a 30, 60, 90, you have small, medium, and large. The small side, let's say, has a length of one. The medium would be square root three, and the large would be two. Two, that's double one. Square root three times one. So to make this clear, let's say that this was X for the little guy. The little leg, X. The hypotenuse would be 2X. The medium would be X square root three. And that's what we have here. In this triangle there, we have a small, medium, large. This is the small, because it's across the 30. This is the medium, it's across the 60. And the hypotenuse is king, large. Now, small, medium, large here, the small is half S, which means the medium is half S times square root three. And I propose that that's all we need to find the area of this triangle. The area of this triangle would be one half base times height. One half is one half. The base would be all of this, which is S. And the height, the altitude, would be this guy, which is one half S square root three. One half times one half times square root three is square root three over four. S times S is S squared, which is why if you Google area of equilateral triangle, Google will say this, I guarantee it. Now, you know, take a step back. <laughs> Where did this come from? This was one triangle of six. So for the area of the hexagon, I need to take this number and multiply it by six. So. For the area of this hexagon, for the area of our regular hexagon, the area would be six times square root three over four s squared. So the area would be three square root three over two s squared. If you reduce it. So for our for our prism, for our hexagonal based prism, this is the area, the area of that hexagon. Now, let's draw the prism. The prism is going to look like this. That. And then let's go like this here. Let's connect. This is a horrible looking picture, but the math will be sound. Gosh, that's awful. <laughs> so we have this is S and this is H. H is the height of the prism if you were to stand it on your table where this hexagon would be on the table and the other hexagon would be up here in the sky. Now, how would we find the volume? How would we find the surface area of this object? Here we go. 
our surface area would be two bases plus six faces. Because recall, surface area is like gift wrap. You have to cover two faces and you have to cover six faces. Two bases, six faces. So this surface area would be two times the area of the base. And we established that a moment ago. The area of each of these hexagonal based or of these hexagons would be three square root three over two times S squared. Plus six times, well, a face is each of these six rectangles. Each of these rectangles has dimensions S by H. So it'd be S times H. Let's clean this up a little bit. So th these cancel. So it's three square root three S squared plus six SH. This is the formula for the surface area of this hexagonal based prism. And our goal is to take this surface area and to minimize it. That is the whole point of this video. You tell me the desired volume, and I tell you how to find the minimum surface area. So in calculus for minimums, we need derivatives. But if you look at this function, I have two variables, S and H. If I found the derivative now, I would need the product rule. I want to stay away from as many rules as I can to make this as simple as possible. So let's pause. Let's go play over here. And let's discuss the volume of this solid. The volume of the solid is found by finding the base area and multiplying it by the height of the solid. Well, the area of the base was that hexagon, which we said was three halves square root three s squared. And the height of the object is the height off the table, which we called H. So volume equals this. S and H can fluctuate. What's going to be fixed is the volume, right? Because the volume is going to be a very specific number. Let's do this. How about we isolate that H? Let's get this H alone. Let me multiply by the reciprocal of three halves, which would be two thirds. It would get rid of this. It would appear on that side. And let me go ahead and divide both sides by square root 3 s squared to get h alone. So if I do that, we would do, do the algebra, uh, the arithmetic. h would equal 2v over 3 square root 3 s squared. That's an s. Right. If you divide both sides, if you just multiply those denominators, you'd get this as H. So now let me take this, which is H, and plug it in there for H. So surface area would equal 3 square root 3 S squared plus 6 S times H, which is 2V over 3 square root 3 S squared. Okay, so now let me get this eraser. Let me get some of this stuff off the board. All right, let's keep going here. Let's clean this up. So this is three square root three S squared plus, if you clean up this mess, you can go S knocks out the square. It's just one S in the bottom. This three turns the six into a two. Two times two gives you four V over square root three S. And let me actually rewrite this as 3 square root 3 s squared plus 4 over square root, let me call that 4v, square root 3 s to the power of negative 1 if I bring this s to the top. This is still surface area. And I want to minimize it. To minimize things in calculus, 
you find the derivative and you set the derivative equal to zero and you solve for something. So now let's find the derivative. So let me go S A prime, the derivative, and go power rule or whatever rules you want to use from calculus. Two times that would be six square root three S. The two becomes a one. Now power rule again. Negative one times that would be minus four V square root three S to the negative two. Recall, I am treating V as a constant. V is not a variable. V is a fixed constant, the desired volume of the solid. Let's continue. I found the derivative. You set the derivative equal to zero. So zero would replace S prime. Let me get rid of this. Let me go up here now. So we have zero equals six square root three S minus, let me call this four V over square root three S squared. If I bring the S squared back to the bottom to make the power positive, let's take this term, add it to the other side, four V square root three S squared, six square root three S over one. Why don't we cross multiply? One times four V is four V. This times that, if you clean that up, that'll be six times three, which is 18 S cubed. Let's get S alone. S is our variable. We typically isolate variables. Divide both sides by uh, 18. Let's get this off the board. Divide by 18 and then reduce that fraction on the left. Mm -hmm. So we'd get 2v over 9 equals s cubed. Cube root, both sides. So s equals the cubic root of 2v over 9. And boom, this should be money in the bank. I would propose that this is what we were after. Let me get rid of some of this. Let me explain what we had just found. And then we're pretty much done with this, with this video. So what this formula tells you is this. Let me get the pencil back out. If you tell me volume equals, let's say you want the volume of your prism to be 100, okay? If you want the volume to be 100, then you take 100 and you plug it in for V there. That becomes two times 100, which is 200 divided by nine. You cube root on the calculator and you get some decimal. That decimal would represent S. Now, what did S represent? Recall what S represented. This was S, this was H. So again, the power of this formula. If you tell me, if you tell me what the volume is, if you tell me the volume, I take that number, plug it in here, and for V. Calculator tells me S, so I know what the hexagon side length has to be. Once you know S and V, you can plug it into pretty much any formula from before. Is there a formula that we had that had S and V and H? There should have been one. There should have been a few formulas, but I think I erased a bunch of them. Wasn't there a formula that said volume equals, wasn't there a formula here in green that said volume equals something like, um, it said three over two square root three S squared times H, right? We had a formula there that I erased because there was so much math here. There was a formula earlier and it said that, that the volume of the prism is this formula here. So if you choose your volume, plug it in there to find S. Once you know S and V, plug in V there, plug in your S there, and you'll discover H. Then you'll know both S and H, 
And that prism, however it looks, maybe it's tall, maybe it's short and wide, who knows? But whatever that prism looks like, I guarantee you the surface area of that prism is smaller than any other possible surface area that you could get from the original fixed volume. So in conclusion, the formula that you want to use is this guy here because it tells you S from your desired V. Once you know S and V, go there to find H. Done.